clearly this uh, Mercedes starts, runs, and drives. Uh, the customer brought it to me. He, he drove it to me uh, with concerns of asking if I could program the front sand with the used one that he got. Uh, he also got a rear sand, but I, I think that's got nothing to do with it right now. Uh, before I do anything with the uh, with the whole vehicle, the original SAM is installed. He has gotten water damage in it, and the blinkers and wipers don't work. That's why he's trying to swap the SAM. So I started running it. So I cranked it, started it, let it run. While I did a complete system uh, scan, and everything would come up as not equipped, not equipped. And it took quite a while. Uh, I actually had to punch in the VIN because it couldn't self-identify it. Now the front SAM, I, I believe, also on this vehicle is the uh, central gateway. So the scanner will go from OBD to the front SAM and then distribute from there. And as you can see, <laughs> and I myself haven't had this situation yet where it's all blank. So it tried to reach out to all modules and nothing came up and nothing came up as being saved on here as you can tell uh, trying to focus. So there's clearly something going on with the SAM when even just trying to scan the vehicle but like on the back end past the uh, OBB side I guess within its circle it must be communicating with everything else because it clearly authorizes the cranking and starting and talks with the engine computer and ignition and fuel all that and the transmission because it was driven here so everything let's call on the back end past the gateway seems to be talking uh, but us trying to reach it through OBD, we're having problems going past it and talking to all the modules. So there's, he didn't really bring it for that as he just notices he doesn't have any wipers and blinkers. Um, so this is going to be my first time trying to figure out if I can even do a front SAM uh, of this type style generation whatever you want to call it and so I just want to try to bring you guys along to see what we can get done all right so first thing to do is see if the tools even equipped to do this specific module uh, again I've not ever had to do a SAM up to this point yet surprisingly so uh, let's go ahead and check to see if it is available. Now clearly it's not any of these, it's not an engine or a mobilizer airbag, any of that. So we would go into other and obviously specifically Mercedes. And this one, this vehicle is it's a it's a C class and the chassis is a 204. So if you see here like a C class, it's a W205, and we've got a 204. That is a front SAM, but it's not our actual, uh, let's call it chassis and or generation. So, let's see. Uh, okay, there we go. So 204 front SAM, read and write. So we do have the capability to do this one. That's definitely a good thing uh, to letting me be able to get the job done let's see about the hookups all right so with these uh, based off of this we can go ahead and use this map it out on the actual module make our connections and see if we can get a read um, I think I'm gonna try on his donor first since that's uh, easily, you know, it, it's off the car. The other one's still, the original one's still in the car. Uh, I'm going to practice, do everything on the donor first, then bring out the 
original, read that, and then get back on the donor to transfer the uh, information. Now, the only other thing is I hope that I can read info off of the original because he said it did get wet and uh, some damage uh, was on there, which surprisingly, this one almost looks like uh, was out of a damaged one with some water there. So it must be a common thing. Yeah. I'm wondering if down there got wet. But uh again, we'll uh we'll get set up, see if we can get a good read and go from there. All right. So obviously I was able to get all my connections made, tied into the programmer and then this is the uh info that I pulled from it. And I'm just looking through it just uh, out of curiosity in the uh, hex editor. Um, I always tend to try to look to see if there's a VIN number to be found. Uh, just, just for, you know, out of curiosity and, and playing around. looks like that is part of a VIN number right there uh, that WDD GF8 I think is the starting ones for our, these Mercedes so uh, that's that's a good thing we've got a good read we've pulled some info we got a VIN number now this is in the EEPROM portion uh, I've read both the EEPROM and flash uh, off of the MCU uh, again, this is just the donor info. So I'm gonna now that I know I can do it, save it, get good reads and everything. We'll go ahead do the same thing with the original as long as we can read it, and then come again, come back to this one and uh, shove the original info onto this donor. All right, so I got my connections made on the original one out of the car, um, and there you could tell where there was some damage. Uh, I'll show you that once I uh, unplug from it. Now, one of the first things I'd like to do is hit the read ID. And... Uh, yeah, we might want to connect that. That might help. So... Let's see if it'll read now. Okay, so that that's just a thing I like to do to tell us about our connections and whatnot. And just to tell you, this was the same ID as the uh, donor one. So we'll go ahead and we are in EEPROM right now. We're going to read that first. And I've set my verification to uh, read twice, that way it can compare both reads, and if it pulls up a read after the second time it reads it, like this now, it means that we have good, two good comparable equal reads, and so we are secure to save this now, knowing that it's not a corrupt read. All right, we'll save that and then let's back out and do the flash. Obviously, this is the bigger of the two files, so it'll take a minute. All right, the flash is done and saved. Um, let's just look at the... EPRON pull up a VIN. Alright, so there is the VIN and we can compare that with the car. Alright, and as you can see, we definitely have a match. So we 
we're able to successfully pull the info out of this SAM despite the fact that on the vehicle it's not communicating and just to show you you see down there looks like some of the pins and legs got uh, corroded away from the water damage so now we'll go ahead and get the donor one hooked up and we'll write to it all right i've got my connections made again there's the original and now we'll go ahead and we'll do the read id again just to make sure we are hooked up good and correctly all right so there we go there's that id now we want to go to right now just out of i remember seeing something when i was doing a little bit of research and i took a screenshot so let's see first write eprom then flash otherwise flash could be lost uh, now I think that was for this version's secured as opposed to unsecured but we're gonna do it this way anyway uh, since just want to avoid any mishaps so we are writing so we're gonna do the EEPROM first so there we go EEPROM Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Let's... I am in the flash. <laughs> so, uh, in the flash portion and I was trying to write EEPROM. That's why it was giving me that issue uh, let's go back out too far so back into eprom now we hit right and obviously it's going to work correctly now so just got to pay attention let's see what you guys are doing um there we go and i also have the verification set to write twice Alright, so we've written the EEPROM, let's go ahead and now we can go into flash and write flash. Again this might take a minute since it is a bigger file and it's going to do it twice. On these autels, when they're reading and or writing, it, I think that if you notice that 5% mark was kind of steady, stay idle for a minute. Uh, if you're going to have issues with it not reading, not writing, or any of that sort, it won't go past 5%. It'll just kick you out with an error message. So if, <laughs> if you're watching it sitting, all you want to do is hope that it crosses the 5% point. Once it does, you know you're good. So, um, I don't know why it took so long on writing to get past the 5%, but just a little, you know, tip for you guys out there. All right, guys. So, that's another successful write. Um, I think out of curiosity... Just to verify, here on the bench, let's go ahead and read the EEPROM. The pull up. So what we want to see now is the VIN from the original module transferred over onto this after we written onto the EEPROM. So what we'll have to do is perform the read, save it, then put it in the hex editor and uh, verify.
All right, let's uh, go to the hex editor, open that file, and check. All right, so there we go. We have the original VIN number has now been transferred and written into this donor uh, front SAM. So go ahead, disconnect all this, uh, bring it to the car, and see what it does. Alright, so I had my fun installing that. Uh, let's go ahead and power up the car. Alright, now... Let's see if we can scan it. Let's see if it'll even start. All right, so a couple odd things. The vehicle's not starting, but we are identifying it through the scanner, which we were not able to do so beforehand. So we fixed one thing and ruined another. So yeah, we're getting full scanner activity and communication. Let's see if it'll read any modules. Okay, so it's pulling some, uh, at least the, uh, looks like fuel pump control module, engine control module. All right, so we are actually communicating with some of the uh, relevant modules, let's call it, but we're not able to crank it. So, not sure what's going on. Um, I'm just going to have to... Let this finish scanning and see what kind of codes it's got. I don't know, this this SAM is working, but it's not working. Again, yes, it's a used one. Uh, so, who knows? Let, let's see what codes we get. Alright guys, so, again, these are the trouble codes. So, let's see. So all these are listed as stored. Alright, so everything that we've got is listed as stored pretty much. And we're actually communicating with the SAM. And everything in the SAM, front SAM, so that's the rear. This is the front SAM, uh, which is what we put in. Um, everything is stored there other than headlight stuff so I'm not seeing anything uh, okay bus windshield wiper I don't know um, I guess I'll try to clear the codes and kind of go from there. One thing I did want to show you guys, so he was complaining about the uh, blinkers. So now that's working also. Um, the wipers you clearly see, and I think he said maybe the wiper motor is bad. Um, and there was trouble code in there also for that. So, um, I mean, we fixed his complaint. Wipers, not the wipers, the uh, blinkers. So, you know, I guess we can ship it. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. We got to see why it's not cranking. Uh, I believe I plugged in everything correctly. I mean, it's a ton of connectors over there. So, I'll have to recheck that when it's done uh, clearing fault memory and go from there.
Guys, so apparently there's a thing about uh, some newer SAM modules come with uh, a different pinout or it's just wired differently for the starter. And basically it tells you to check, compare new with old. If it's different, basically step 10 there, it tells you to uh, install an adapter harness that you're also supposed to get with the SAM module and installing those pins. Which I obviously don't have the correct jumper harness, so uh, looking online, I am sort of familiar with the type of connector that it looks to be, and I think it's going to be the same as this, so I'm going to try to get this removed. I think it's that style or that type, so uh, basically a jumper harness is a two pin uh, wire that uh, connects uh, one pin to another in the SAM. So I'm going to cut these, join them, and see if that works. Alright, so here's my harness. And anyone needs to know the type. So I think it's going to be this type or style. So, yeah. Uh, that came out of, uh, so it's an injector harness off of uh, N52. So, um, regular port injector, BMW. And what's funny is, I just compiled this over to the side because it was getting to be a little too much and you know I didn't know if I was gonna throw all of those away or whatnot but I always kept them for situations like this to kind of save your butt and it just now literally did um, and then I've got another pile there as well so I don't know I still might clean some up but today that did pay out to save my butt. So let's go get this installed and see if we can get it cranking. So it's these two connectors, the squared white one and then the uh, gold one here. So the gold one, you go into pin 12, which is here on the end. Perfect, so that does fit. And this white one's going to be pin 4. And the numbers are on the uh, connector here, so that makes it easy. Alright, let's install this. Alright, let's see. <laughs> Alright. Perfect. So... Let's see, again, I showed you earlier, that works, that works, and no uh, no issues, no error messages, nothing. Uh, successfully clone a front SAM module on this, it's a W204-09C300.